what team were you on in your rotation? What are some things you like and dislike about being an APM? You mentioned you were in the APM rotation for a little over a year. What made you decide to pivot to APM? My name is Joseph. I live in San Francisco and currently an APM associate product manager at Google. I'm working at YouTube. I went to University of Michigan, go blue. In my free time, I like to do various like Bay Area SF things, tennis, pickleball, yeah, hiking, climbing, stuff like that. Just curious, how do you uh, go from tennis to pickleball? Yeah, I've been warming up to pickleball. I thought it was like a fake sport at first because I grew up really playing tennis, but it's been growing on me. It's fun. It's a little bit more like ping pong, like smaller. You're an APM at Google, but you did have a background in product marketing. Would love to learn more about your journey to product marketing first. Can you share more about that? For sure. When I was in college, I started out as a computer science major. And then I started exploring just my own side projects. And a lot of the projects were exposed me to marketing. So I was bored with classes, which is what got me into these side projects. I started a clothing brand with some friends. I got into e-commerce. I got into running political campaigns, using my ads knowledge that I did from, that I got from uh, e-commerce. I started my newsletter and I was just tinkering with all these things because I was trying to get more hands-on experience because I was frustrated with the traditional path of college. And through all these side projects, I got more and more interested in marketing. I think the idea of just understanding human nature, understanding human behavior and what makes, what kind of messaging makes people respond was really interesting to me. And then I started using all, all of my scrappy marketing experience. I started doing growth consulting for startups. And before I got my APMM offer at Google, I actually got a couple offers from startups as like early growth hire from seed and series A startups. So I never exactly was planning on going to product marketing, but all the marketing experience led up to it. That's awesome. You did e-commerce, local campaigns, and then you also did the newsletter. Which project was your favorite and what did you learn that you felt like had the most impact? Yeah, I would say newsletter. I went to Umish, which is where the founders of Morning Brew went as well. And when they were doing their first referral referral program and campus ambassador program. I was sitting in those business classes when some of their ambassadors were handing out the, the sheets of paper to get people to sign up for their newsletter. And now that referral program is famous in the newsletter industry for being a good marketing tactics. Morning Brew was just, it was like finance and tech news for millennials. And they got acquired for like 75 million by Business Insider a few years after they started. They were super inspirational for me, and that's how I got interested in newsletters. So I started my own newsletter. It was for job seekers looking for non-technical roles in the tech industry, and I grew that to 10,000 readers, and eventually we got acquired by a startup uh, in the recruitment space. That was a good overall experience that taught me a lot about building an audience, monetizing an audience through advertising. And also just like working with startups to learn how you can add value to a product by having an owned audience. That's awesome. Can you talk more about your application interview process with the APMM program and how you ended up deciding to go with APMM versus other uh, potential offers? Yeah, the APMM process, I approached it similar to like standardized testing, like you just learn the types of questions that get asked. And I watched uh, your videos and some other like PMM interview prep. And I just learned all about the types of questions, the types of marketing case questions. It was just a lot of practice. And I also, for the behavioral stuff, it wasn't a lot of extra work because I had been saving stories from my past experiences that I've been, that I had been writing down for the previous few years of just doing internships and projects and stuff. So I had a bunch of stories ready in the star format, situation, task, action, result, learning. 
yeah, it was just a lot of like documentation over time and then really practicing for those cases. And then, yeah, Google APMM was, there's three interviews. I would say it was a pretty standard process. But once I did, once I got the offer and I also had the offers from startups, I think I just wanted to, I think the classic answer for why big company, even if you're interested in startups, it's like, oh, you should get experience first before taking a risk. I think that's somewhat true for me, but I think it was more so for the social aspects because I think going to a new city as a new grad, it was just helpful to have that social structure and a bunch of other young people, other APMMs to just live life and build a, a social circle in the first um, couple of years of living in SF. I would say that's one of the biggest reasons why I chose to uh, go, go ahead with the APMM. What team were you on in your rotation? What are some things you like and dislike about being an APMM? Yeah, so I only did one rotation as an APMM and then I switched over to APM. But in my first rotation, I was in a go-to-market role on Nest. So Nest is the devices team where we sell stuff like the original Nest thermostat, but now they also have other stuff like the speakers and the Wi-Fi and uh, the screens and things like that. So my job as a go-to-market um, APMM was launching these physical products for my channels. So there are multiple GTM APMMs and we are in charge of different channels. So my channels were third-party retail. So that included Amazon online, Best Buy online, but also physical retail stores like Walmart and like the brick and mortar Best Buy stores. So I would work with regional teams in APAC, EMEA, and Americas, and then also work with channel marketing, the channel marketing people who would work with their accounts like Amazon and Best Buy. And then I'd also work with uh, a marketing agency to create these marketing assets that we would use to launch the devices in these channels. And the, the main output of a product marketer for my specific role was the marketing brief. This was just a central document that described all the specifications for what the those creative assets should look like in the different channels. And what did I like and dislike about being an APMM? I would say one of the best things about this role was I got to see the launch process from start to finish. So there were a lot of overlapping product launches throughout the year, and they were they would last up to like up to a year or more from all the way from the beginning to the end. Some of them were shorter, some were longer, but since I was in the role for a little more than a year, I got to see a few different launches like from start to finish. And that was really cool. One thing that I disliked in general is just the big company culture. There's a lot of benefits to big companies, but in general, it's not as experimental in terms of like the marketing and messaging as I was used to from doing my kind of side project stuff and startup stuff. Yeah, it was an adjustment to get used to, oh, this brief is mostly going to follow similar type of messaging that we've done in the past. We're not going to do anything like super crazy. You mentioned you were in the APM rotation for a little over a year. What made you decide to pivot to APM and what was that process like? Yeah, I think for me, long-term, I'm interested in entrepreneurship and startups. And because of that, I, you know, as an entrepreneur, you have to be good at a lot of different things. I was hoping to just get more skills in different areas. Yeah, I was interested in product management, especially at Google, because at Google, that's a very like technical led company. So a lot of the marketing efforts were sometimes downstream of product management decisions. So they would have engineers and product managers who would decide what the product is going to be. And then that gets handed off to marketing and then marketing makes decisions about how to market it. It is not as integrated as a company that's, for example, like Salesforce. I would imagine that their product marketing is probably more integrated with product decisions because they're a more sales-led company, a marketing-led company, but Google is not like that. So yeah, I thought that Google product man management at Google would be a good opportunity because I would be exposed to like high leverage decisions that are closer to the product. Yeah, and applying to that was 
it was pretty much the same interview process as everyone else. I just applied. I did apply internally, but it was the same interview process. And then I think it helped that I had APMM at Google on my resume already. So that probably helped me get the interview. The product management interviews were pretty standard PM interview questions as well. I just did a lot of practice for those. Once you got into the APM program, what was your role there? And how was it different from an APM on a daily basis? I'm in my first rotation as an APM and I'm on YouTube. I'm on this YouTube gaming team that's building this new product called Playables. We're currently out in beta right now. So there's users using the product right now. And yeah, I've just been working on it for the past year. I'm working on features. There's not a ton I can say about it publicly, but just working on various parts of the Playables product. And yeah, day to day, I'm working with engineers. Instead of a marketing brief like APMM, my primary output is the PRD, the product requirements. Instead of working with creative teams, I'm working with engineers. So I'm working with engineers to discuss trade-offs and prioritization for features that need to be included in the product. It's similar to APMM in that you have a lot of different stakeholders that you're managing, but the stakeholders are just different for uh, product management. What do you find the most fulfilling in this role? And what's the, the biggest challenge that you're facing in this role? Yeah, one of the most fulfilling things is, I would say, just making decisions. I think that when I was in the APMM role, the, I, I got used to almost like borrowing decisions from other people since it was like more downstream of some other things i would there there would be the central core pmm who would create the messaging and positioning strategy create the key selling points and then since i was a go to market pmm i would use those uh messaging and positioning points and then adapt them to whichever channels i was doing what i find fulfilling about pm is like there's more the decision making is it's not really downstream of anything. You're just like, you're trying to understand competitive analysis, the just the needs of the user, and then the technical constraints. And you're just making decisions based on the inputs that you have. There is some process and bureaucracy and stuff where sometimes you just do stuff because that's how you do it at a big company. But in general, I would say it's fulfilling to be able to make decisions that mostly feel like you're that are just coming from yourself. In terms of the program itself, what are the main differences between APM and APMM? Yeah, so the structure is pretty similar. There's two years generally, one year in each rotation. I think Google is changing the APMM program a little bit where the rotation is a little bit more restricted, be in a certain product area. And I think you can only rotate within certain teams, but they're... Generally, yeah, two rotations, two years. I would say number of hires. I think APMM is bigger. There's around 50 APM hires each year. And there's more than that. I think there's probably double that or more for APMMs. Yeah, but in terms of community, it's pretty similar. There's a lot of activities. There's a trip. There's an APM trip. There's an APMM trip as well. One difference that seems minor, but for me, it was like pretty big was for the APM program, you get access to a management coach at Google. Like they give you a management coach that you can talk to twice a month. And the management coach does its executive like management coaching. Like normally they coach people like, like C-suite executives, but we get access to them and they coach us on our like decision-making and career and stuff. And so they're not subject matter experts in whatever we're working on, but they're, it's almost like a business therapy. We can talk about, oh, I'm having this issue at work with this person or this process for this way that I'm thinking about this problem and they can talk you through it. And that's been really help, helpful in like identifying my own uh, blind spots in the way that I'm thinking and stuff like that. So management coach has been really um useful and that's provided by the APM program. That's awesome. Looks like that grooming you to be <laughs> the next soon <Sundar. laughs> Yeah, I think that's the goal. Yeah, the, the APM program is is pretty 
old like they it's been going on for a long time and the goal definitely is to have to have apms grow up within the company and then become leaders last question is uh, what advice do you have for aspiring apms or apm ups my advice would be to so if you're an aspiring apm or apmm you're probably in college or less than two or three years out of college if you're in college i would say i would just continue doing projects like if like internships are really hard to get a lot of times and especially right now job market is pretty hard so of course you should try to get internships because you have that stamp on your resume that oh yeah you can do this legit work but for me i got most of my most meaningful experiences from projects and i just asked people around me like hey you're a cs major like oh you're a design person let's just make this project together let's make an app and the, like doing that kind of stuff formed the kind of the backbone of my resume which got me into my first role and some of my first internships yeah especially if you have like competitive clubs in your college there's a lot of uh competitive consulting clubs and software clubs and stuff i applied to a lot of those things when i was in college and i, I like got rejected from clubs and i was like what the heck like I thought college was supposed to prepare me for a job and I can't even get into clubs. What am I supposed to do? So that's why I just started doing projects. So yeah, in that order, internships, clubs, and then if you can't do that, just start doing projects. But do projects anyway, because it's fun. And I think it teaches you the most entrepreneurial skills if you're interested in that stuff. So yeah, find people on your campus or even on LinkedIn. And just, if you have an idea, just try to try to make it happen. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Love your approach. If you can't find a way, you just make one. Yep. Yep. Cool. Joseph, thank you so much for sharing about your journey from college to APMM to APM and all the wonderful advice along the way. Yeah. Thank you, Henry. <laughs>